Good evening. In November 2015, the NRM Delegates Conference was held at Namboli Stadium with the sole purpose of amending the party constitution to lock out former Prime Minister and the party Secretary General John Patrick Amama Babaji from challenging President Yoweri Museveni for the party's top position. The amendment saw Museveni nominate Justin Kasule Lumumba as Secretary General to replace Mbabazi. Five years later, Mbabazi seems to have worked his way back into the circles of power with the ruling party, and an invitation has been sent to him to attend the upcoming NRM Delegates Conference as a special guest of the president. What does Mbabazi's renewed relationship with Museveni mean for the NRM party and 2021 general elections? To discuss this and many others, we have invited the NRM Secretary General Justin Kasule Lumumba. Just thank you very much for having honored our invitation. Welcome to the show. A warm welcome to you, and you are on the spot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kamara. Thank you, viewers, and good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Okay, we would want, first of all, you to bring us to speed on the NRM Delegates Conference, which is taking place this weekend, because I know you've been having a Central Executive Committee meet meeting, and maybe NEC. But just bring us to speed in terms of preparation and what is, is going to happen next, uh, tomorrow and, and the days to come. The, the, um, the temperature is now up. Mm -hmm. Political temperature okay. in NRM, where we are going to have these activities. One, today we received the delegates who are who the accredited majority of them. Mm -hmm. Because we are supposed to have National Executive Council, NEC, tomorrow. And it will be beginning at 10. And to, I mean tomorrow. So today we had Central Executive Committee. Both are chaired by the National Chairman, His Excellency Yuri Kagutam Seven. But to be precise, today we discussed the, 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 the part of what is going to be contained in the speech by the National Chairman. And uh, we also discussed constitutional amendments. And the Central Executive Committee has decided to carry only one constitutional amendment that the resolution has been passed to be taken to NEC tomorrow. And what is this and amendment? And the resolution is to do with the mode of voting. When you look at our constitution, we are supposed to vote by secret ballot. But because of what, because of the experience we have gone through, in terms of logistics, in terms of issues of transparency, in terms of uh, management, in terms we feel as a party we cannot uh, carry on like that. And that's why SEC took a decision. And SEC is taking a decision a second time because when we had uh, a report made to SEC by the Secretary General after the LC1 elections, part of the lessons that SEC picked out was the mode of voting. Voting by lining up, voting by voting by voting by lining up, and uh, in terms of finances, in terms of uh, the, the 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 petitions that followed, because you remember, after the vo the ROC one vote, those who filed petitions with the electoral commission, the independent electoral commission, the the petitions were 570, but in court there were about 320. But I, when you compare that to the petitions we had after the primaries and elections of the structures within the party, we had about 1,600. And it was, it was so hectic, and yet we had to go into campaigns. But let me ask, you meet as Central Executive Committee and take such a fundamental decision uh, to, you know, to change the mode of voting, you haven't involved the, the 16,000 delegates who are supposed to be coming on Saturday. Is that fair to them? But there is a process, and which is clearly spelled out in the Constitution. So SEC takes a decision, and when takes, SEC takes a decision, makes a recommendation to NEC, and tomorrow NEC will sit. So the resolution that uh, was passed today by NEC would be presented to Ne by SEC will be presented to NEC tomorrow. Which is also by the chaired by the party chairman. chairperson, right? And then if it carries SEC the is day, chaired by the, pa the national party chairperson yes, according and to NEC at the same time. And the national conference. So, yes. So, so the that is the constitution of NRM. 
That's what the members so of the NRA... So chances are, Honorable Justin Kasule Lumumba, that what the SEC has, has proposed is what will take, will go through NEC and the Degas conference. That is, that, 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 you, you may think so, but at the end of the day, it is the, the, the people to decide. The so, members so in those, this, in so the, the, those this, different organs. So again, again uh, ultimately you will take these views to the delegates conference on changing the mode of voting, right? Yes, we are, in the case it is carried in neck, okay. then it will be taken to SEC. I mean, if it is carried in neck, it will be taken to the national conference on Saturday under the, the chair. Okay. Yeah. So now why change the mode? I know you because of the petition and all these conflicts you had after the voting, but can't you iron out that mode of voting by secret ballot? So do you do not have a lot of people petitioning? You don't have a lot of conflicts, people, you know, even breaking off from the party. You can actually, you as Secretary General, run it in a smooth manner that it is believable, it's robust, and people don't have to come and petition. We are saying it involves a lot of logistics, resources, Democracy in terms of human, human, human power, so which the party cannot afford, because you know it very well. We got into elections for both structures and primaries on the eve of general elections, and when we are going for general elections, elections go on for all posts. So we are a party that fronts candidates for all elective posts in this country unlike our sister parties. And we are a party that, would, that involves every member of that particular community who, is, who carries our card, who, who believes in NRM, who carries the NRM ideology, is the person who, who, who either offers himself as a candidate or is a voter because he's a member. So the, the massive involvement of many people not electoral college, with the exception of the special interest groups at the upper level, especially parliamentary and the ROC5. You find the, we want to involve everybody so that everybody owns the candidate. But where you find that we have had primaries and then somebody who participated in primaries goes to contest as an independent. We had 701 who had participated in primaries and then went to contest as independents. And out of those, 31 won. You know? 31 is a big number in a parliament of 400 people. Though some of the independents still work with us, but they didn't participate in primaries. But they decided not to contest, maybe they had other issues. Even us people who manage primaries are the ones who are saying, let let's me, go let for lining this, up let me get because this. of issues of management of primaries. So let me get this very clear once again. What is it that you are trying to cure? by lining up? Transparency is one. Two, the logistics, financial implications. Three, we want people to does, own. When you secret, lose, you lose. How does a secret ballot take away the transparency? How does a, a, a party that is massive, that, that, that has been in power for so long, fail to organize, get issues of, of logistical challenges? You know, look at how we decided to separate government and the party. So we separated the government and the party. Into the decision was taken in December, 14th December 2014. Though there you said 2015. 2015 I was making a year in office the, when you talked of uh, December 2015. So when the, go when the party decided to separate government and the party, that is now more or less the time now we, dis we started off finding separate resources for the party. Because remember, we had people who are in the government, holding offices in the government, having vehicles of government, logistics of government, but doing party work. We decided to separate the two. So when we separated, yes, NRM has been in power as long as you know, but at the same time, NRM started off on issues of resource mobilization in 2015 when the decision was finally taken and it was on the 8th of January 2015. So before that so, NRM was more parasitic to the state. To but the remember first of all it was... Bef a, before that be, Remember were, even before that it was a movement system where the movement secretariat was part of the structures of government. Has that really changed? It has changed.
it many has changed people, because now remember at that time it was more of part of the it was a department in the government if i may use the word but now we are only funded we get funding from government under an act the public parties stroke organization act it is under that honorable, that we honorable political Justin parties that Kassule have Lumumba. that have membership you are in the parliament your political adversaries in the parliament, today in your political adversaries today they don't feel that they are actually you know reveling against the party they feel they are against the state against the government because for them their their the political adversary is not their party it's, it's it's a government because you see those other dcs that will be jostling in the districts there trying to look for votes for nrm the district internal security officers will be the same will be doing the same the entire apparatus of internal security will be working for the nrm party and you know that some members of Operation Wealth Creation will be deployed for, to work for the party. Even today, the state is still so much fused within the party. Nothing much has changed, the Honorable. But Mr. Kamara, do you remember that at one time I came here as Secretary General and informed the country that we were reducing on the manpower at the Secretariat because of logistical issues? Do you remember at one time I came here and said we were postponing certain activities on our roadmap because of issues of logistics? Why is it that when NRM talks on issues where we have challenges, you decide, even you, who I, am, I assume you are, you are neutral, but I don't know anyway which party you belong to, you, you, you decide not to listen. You know, let me, let me tell you that we who are doing party work, you assume that everything is okay in terms of logistics. It's not. It's not. And that's why certain decisions are taken. Yeah, because Even somebody sometimes would wonder, some somebody of the would decisions is, is it because some of, of the it, decisions, Mr. Kamara, are taken under the chair of President Yuri Kagutam Seven, who is the national chairman of NRM. And then he also accepts yes, we don't have enough resources to do this. Let's take this cheaper option. When he's the president, the chief minister of finance. So when people carry that opinion, I want you to look at the back of their mind. Have they really analyzed this? When you talk of government using, I mean, NRM party using these structures, all these structures, first of all, there is no law that bars, there is no law that bars the president from appointing his son or his daughter to be an RDC. But or to be, that's to, not, um, that's uh, not no, what I'm, that's saying not what I'm that questioning on wait, Justin. wait, wait. So when assuming he appoints his son or his daughter to be an RDC, and they believe in the same ideology, they believe in the so same ideology, you think when this person becomes an RDC, will cease to, to, to have that ideology in his mind or her mind? It will remain the same. There are but, certain but things. The is, do you have to go ahead and campaign and look for and campaign? No, I've not party? talked of campaigning, but carrying the same no, ideology. Yeah, you can yes, carry the same carrying ideology. Carrying the same ideology. But, but you yes. do not have to go. Like uh, the ideology have, of NRM. But don't have we to have go into partisan politics. You don't we have, have patriotism. Go, you don't have to participate have into partisan politics. We have uh, social economic transformation and democracy. If you carry those, you will still, as you do your work, you will make sure. You, you, you impart that in the minds of the people. Is that wrong? When you are saying people or in the 68% should, we should work to make sure they, live, they, they get out of it and instead begin working to have some more incomes instead of working for the well, for their I, what, what, I, what I know if you are so appointed there, if your, your somebody is appointed under a DC and he carries campaign. that and he carries that encourages people to grow coffee and how to look after coffee encourages but, people but, to but, leave the swamp but you know that's not to what encourages I'm talking about. people to to have fish ponds what, what what's the problem what's the problem with that there's a whole big problem. It's if an you, ideology. a public official, decides to go into party politics, and that is not part of their job description. You know, your for, you, for who, you to who, carry who your is ideology, campaigning you to... for me? Who to show me who have you found campaigning for in area? You know, sometimes when a head of state is going to visit a district, it, the head of security in that district is the RDC. so he has really to prepare 
for, that, that for, is, for the head not, of state that is, is that, coming. That is not even head of state is that coming. Is, that is not in dispute. That is precisely their job. But I'm talking about when they get into party politics and go and even campaign. Because they have been seen to be on a campaign trail. That has happened. We saw another DC clobbering a, a lady in, in, in Hoima. You know, you in know, Hoima. That, what, what, that you was know, not their job. Mr. That was not that, his job. That was very unfortunate because yeah, but these are the incidents. according to our laws, nobody has the powers to beat the other. That's why there is the court process. But also one thing I want to I'm just Mr. giving it out as an example. I'm, I'm also Kassel saying Kassel that was not right. That and many things right. that are not right. Now, that wasn't right. I don't want you to say many things are not right because there are also very many good things that are happening in this country. But Mr. Kamara, one thing I want you to, to, to re in your mind, internalize. If you want out of your house and you found two cocks fighting, won't your mind support some one of the two? Naturally, won't your mind support one of the two? Come on, I'm Every not human being. Fight, but no, don't look at it at the cock fight. Whenever you see two people are competing, you automatically support one in your mind, even if you don't get out to go and campaign for that part. You may even say, I wish I had a way. I would have prayed for this one. And you pray for that person. No, it's so, not. but then, what is important is how do we limit if in case it happens? How do we limit? And how do we make sure people don't use taxpayers' resources that are meant to be for all to be used for only one individual. Okay. But at the end of the day, you should also remember there are things which you people don't want to look at in a realistic way. You should also remember what pain appoints you. you ha so whoever pays the piper must call the tune. So whoever's appointed... That is your own opinion. Okay, Honorable Kasul Mumbra, it's five years ever since I think you have uh, you were into the office of Secretary General, and you'll be making a report, giving a report to the delegates when they come. But of course, there are those who are watching you all over Uganda now. Maybe you can give us a few details, or a few, uh, you know, areas, how you have been able to perform. How do you look back? What are you have been your achievements in that, in that very big seat of Uganda's massive My party? biggest achievement with my team that I pose of, and I'm so proud of, though when, even if you have a big achievement, that shouldn't make you arrogant. The one mistake you make may even humble you and make you serve better. The, the, at a time we were appointed, the relationship between the two big leaders in the party, His Excellency Yuri Kaguta Museveni and his long-term friend, Honorable, right Honorable Mama Mbabas, the relationship wasn't good. And this are senior people, and why? elders. And why These are people good? I had worked and with why was it for so good? long. You are supposed to even understand it much better than me. You, a researcher. You sit For me, I'm them. a politician. And these you, are people I had, been working with, I, I had been working with. I was a government chief whip. Honorable Mama Mbabas was a, the prime minister and the secretary general. But at the same time, the president was uh, his excellency Yuri Kaguta Seven was the president. So I was working with these two people. This came up. So given the responsibility as a, to, as a secretary general was a big challenge, but at the same time, my role and my colleagues, Honorable Rose Namayanja, Honorable Richard Itodong, Honorable Mona, and the whole team was how do we keep this party together so that the two don't split the party. And for me personally, I feel we achieved because we kept NRM together as a party. But most importantly is that Honorable Mama Mbabazi, who we were perceiving to be threatening to leave the party, actually never brought back our card, never brought back the party card. But also, the, the party remained intact. And even these two senior people, nobody insulted the other. They were using good language. So for me, that was the biggest achievement because it was at a very difficult time. These are two friends. Even as you talk to each of them, you have to be careful not to use a language that causes more divisions. That's one. The second, when we came in, there was the issue of register, register. The party has no register. The registers this side. And we made a register. Yes, it had challenges, but we had a register to begin with. Uh, as we were going into campaigns. Then we went to have 
elections of the party structures right from the parish village level up to national level and we were able to present candidates for elections for most of the posts actually we had 99 percent with the exception of two parishes in chadondo east and also the issues we had in chegegwa district for woman mp those which i assume you may not you may you may have known now when we we concluded the issue of uh, elections we went into into we had petition they were constituting government but also bringing up constituting government in a balanced way but before we constituted government we went to chankwanzi we had a retreat organized by the party and we had the the, the, the people who had won, the, 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 those who had been appointed ministers, the permanent secretaries, and then we said, this is our manifesto. This is what we promised Ugandans that we'll be able to do. Please, this is what we want to be done. And then after that, we had also a retreat with the members of parliament. After having the retreat, we, 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 we had to bring, it was induction, but also... It was uh, orientation in terms of uh, how policies are formulated, but also our political ideology to imparting into the majority of the MPs are young, bringing them on board, but also encouraging them to take on the big responsibility. So those are part of the achievement. So when the government started working, we have seen the fruits. For me, when I see the ginger bridge and the lights are on, I smile. Because it has it has been it it is on at a time when I'm the secretary general of the ruling party, when I see Karuma moving on, I smile, and uh, when I see the, the many oil blocks being discovered, I smile because who is the secretary general of the ruling party? Kasule Rumumba. I think, As I think we do smile, that, when we I have the, the technical schools, technical schools, technical if schools, if you're to appo afford the power tariffs. Because that's the, a challenge. We have the most expensive there is power not having, region. but then there is having, and then you have a challenge of the high power tariffs, and then it goes lower. Like recently, it went lower by 30, 30, 0.03 cents of, of American cents. Then also, technical schools have been built. Look at the one in Nakaseke. Look at the one in Ajumani. But the challenge we have is that we still have the challenge of sensitizing the community to appreciate technical education, vocational education, because that's the way to go. Because education you know, now must be you know, more practical, if, if you build not technical theoretical. schools and you are proud of them, and yet the technical schools, the in enrollment is very low, the tutors you don't this have, is machinery is At not in there. The yeah, but what, what, At least we what know the challenge. At least we know the challenge. We know the challenge. You need to have to go all the way. You have we, to sensitize the people. Let's have the students yes, there. Uh, let's have the, let know, us have the tutors. Let's have the equipment we need to use. You know, knowing the challenge or knowing a problem is 50% a solution found. So I've told you there is that challenge before us. And I'm telling you, that means we are the ones to one, find One of the, the things you also promised in the party manifesto, I think, was to make sure Uganda to become a middle income, uh, to, have to reach a middle income status. We have failed on that. You also no, promised to, no, to produce we 20 have, million bags of coffee by 2020. You have failed flat. No, no, you can't say we have failed flat. When it comes to issues of uh, Ugandans getting to the middle income status, we have moved. Because now as we talk, Ugandans were, the majority of Ugandans were not producing, including the area where I come from, which is Busoga. But if you observe now, we have challenges of market. Ugandans have gone out to produce, to grow sugar cane, so that there is sugar. Now we have a challenge of uh, no market for the sugar. But, but you, Ugandans you, have gone ahead to produce milk. We now don't have enough market. We, we have the milk, but the market is not enough. You look at the tea, the community where you come from. The uh, Ugandans have produced tea. People have grown but now we have challenges but, yeah, of the market. All that area, now, all that area we have of, now which is also the people have produced. All that area, now we have to market. All that but also area that the is issue of handling, the Justin issue of post-harvest handling. The biggest contributor to our, to our GDP is not actually the agriculture, which is employing like almost 80% of our population. The biggest contributor to our GDP are the telecoms.
te the telecommunication industry, and, and which, is, which is having very few, few people it is employing. In other words, the biggest population of our country is contributing less to our GDP. When it comes to issues of uh, the telecom industry, let's analyze it better. You people will always look at the only people who are employed are technicians. How many people are operating mobile money? At the same time, how many people are doing their business or whose businesses are flourishing because of the technology, that technology? Because I always see people, how many people are now marketing their products online? There are many. So let's not look at only those who are the technicians in, in, in MTN, the technicians in Celtel, the technicians. Yeah, let's even, look even, at even, all of those who even, are marketing. Even, even you put that let's number, look at it, all it's of not, those. It's not even comparable to those who are in, in the agricultural industry. It's not comparable. The do, people in agriculture are very many, but still they are contributing so less. I would want to know your party and you, the government in power what it has to ensure that you boost this area of agriculture so that you have your biggest percentage of your people in the country contributing a big chunk to the economy. Because even the telecom industries and the banks that we have are actually not Ugandan. What they are doing is that they are collecting money from us and, and, then, and then taking their money out of this economy. That's why the NRM party took a decision that we should only invest in sectors as a party where the local people have not yet built capacity. And that's also one area where we are, we, are, we, are, we, we are really doing some study as a party so that we invest as a party. When you talk of what, have, what are we planning to make sure agriculture is better, one, we have been talking about irrigation, irrigation. When you grow maize and first of all the science of spacing, when you, you space maize and there is good movement of fresh air, through the, the, the different plants, the, the, then you get big big size of, of the, the maize cobs. But even then, irrigation makes it better. I do the not same doubt the to fact bananas, that you have been talking the about. Issue it. Of you have actually no, talked about, about it, but you have not done anything of about irrigation, it. Issues of irrigation. We still have the no, old no, no, irrigation, the issues schemes, of irrigation like the one where you come from, beyond that in Bugiri, you go to Fort Porto or beyond in Kasese and, and Doha and all the kind of stuff. But you go to Doha the, and the, see what government the, has done in Doha. Do you know when, when, when Doha, not Doha, but yes. Doha, Doha in Italia? Do you know that he, rice, the production went up? Do you know that it has even expanded to areas like Chibuku? And even the people in Chibuku and Utebo have now taken on leaving the swamps to be the wetlands, to be free to regenerate themselves, but also putting ponds on the side. Do you know that in Ibutebu there are people now who can harvest fish and are able to make 20 million a year? So Uganda is growing. Uganda is growing. But what I, I want you to do the, is the, that we, can I, we go beyond, beyond our boardrooms and go and see what is happening? Let me give you an example. When you, when you, when you go to, to, to areas like, uh, let's go to Katakui. Look at Katakui. This road that has been made from uh, Soroti all the way to Moroto and co it would continue up to, up to Kabong, it has changed the economy in that area. Because, yes, there is a big today, chunk of land and there was, no, there, was little, in, in, in there was no market for cassava. Today, but now they have, because of the good, the good road, they, they can market their cassava anywhere. But you, but you but know, which in, wasn't but you the know case. in Karamoja, and cattle, rustling, are, cattle rustling is back and people are actually dying in that part of the area. It's very unfortunate, but the government, yeah, but you know, the, there's, there's, the there's, NRM government, one of, one of what markets the face of NRM government is peace. And restoring peace. You can't tell it and those people we, who have lost it's their, unfortunate their, their, their that relatives lives have gone. in Karamoja. Very unfortunate. And we regret that and we pray for the yeah, souls of can, the departed. Yes, but, but these people... We pray been, for the souls of the departed people. But at the same time, UPDF, police, are going to, res, to restore peace in that place. And I call on all security agencies, let's put together all your efforts to do what we promised to, to do for the Ugandans, especially President Yori Kaguta Museven, keeping Ugandans safe and their properties 
because it's their, it's their constitution. It's a constitutional responsibility to a head of state. And they are busy working. By the way, they work both day and night. You have talked about the growth. We have had the figures, 6% economic growth, which is, uh, which is commendable, which is admirable. But yeah. really... Uh, uh, why, but, don't, but, but, why don't you take the one of my grandfather say, oh, you know, I can't uh, do it very well. Well, so towards the end of that, then it crashes. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is... Uh, somebody added on, <laughs> but that is not The so. problem is that 6% growth and all these figures you're giving us, you know, people, really, majority of Ugandans are not part of that growth. Yes, we recognize the 68% who, they, who, who are under, the, 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 who, who, are, who are working, who are for subsistence farming. We recognize that. And the statistics were carried out by government. And government came up and said, yes, there is this challenge. And that's why you see but, government but has you, put so, up so, so you, many you, efforts, you, you even including finding you market believe, for you our product. The fact that that's despite, why you find that the glorious you know, f uh, growth figures. Mr. Kamara. Majority of Ugandans, even if, you, even if you went to, to Bugiri Mr. today, majority Mr. of the people Mr. there Kamara, are not part of that growth. Mr. Kamara, I'm a teacher by training. I'm a professional teacher. When you ask a question, I would really love you make me, you, you give me the time to conclude the sentence. I don't use long sentences. You give me time to look at uh, Chibinge Cooperative uh, Society in Kalungu, Chibinge, they are exporting coffee to Germany. Chibinge. I was in Kanungu, in Kayonza sub-county. And for them, their prayer to government was, yes, government is concluding, putting up this factory. But we now want to grow organic tea because it fetches more, more money. So there are even some communities that have gone to that level. Here we are in Usoga. We are saying we have the sugar cane, but we are only using on nearly 20% of what, what we can get out of it. Instead of getting only sugar, can we use this to make the papers? Can we use this to make fertilizers? Can we use to make ethanol? Can we use this so, so that we expand, even when you have decided to treat locally? But don't just throw it away. The way people throw rubbish on the roadside. It is also something that can even be used to make the briquettes so that they are used for cooking. And you know, these days also we no longer have many forests, especially where I come back from in Ibsoga, to make for firewood and bouquet. So this could also be a source. Ugandans, even the government, have gone beyond thinking in the traditional way and widening and deepening the issues to do with the, not only democracy, but also issues to do I know, with the I know when you talk like these days, we don't even have forests. You know that forests have been depleted under your watch. You know people cut trees in your but area where you come from. Very good, beautiful trees where you come from, Mr. Kamara. And I, I don't like it. Because but, but, they, but they, Mr. Kamara is not in leadership. You are in leadership. There is a government, there is no, a president it, who is supposed you. to protect our environment. The constitution also gives responsibility to a citizen. It's not only government. The constitution is so clear, gives responsibilities and roles to different people, including the, including the citizen. And the effects of the actions of I, the citizen affect all of us. I can see so now, we should now, all now you're talking about it. people power, right? People to use their own it power. It was restored by NRM for the people, the ordinary people, to decide the people who lead them. So what do you mean Honorable. by people power? Um, yeah, because you're the saying moment the people decide on the people who should lead them, then the power is with them. Honorable Justin Mikasul Lumumba, we will take a break. And then, Present, sir. And then we'll, we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guest tonight is the Secretary General of the NRM Party, Justin Kasule Lumumba. We have had some kind of contradictions, contradicting statements about some members of parliament who are NRM, of course, NRM MPs. Uh, during the constitutional amendment who voted otherwise, some people have called them rebel MPs, whether they are invited or they are not invited. Please, maybe you can clear the air on the status of these members of parliament who we're here, probably are not invited in Namboli. 
this the 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 issue has both political and the legal connotations underlying one as a politician mm -hmm. and uh, somebody who has been in politics since when I was 27, 20 years ago. The, the, I know how to handle when it comes to politics. The actions of uh, my members had political <coughs> implications mm -hmm. and I made a political statement and said, we will not invite them. Do not invite them, and they claim the people sent them. Let them go back to those people because they were voted by the people on the ticket of NRM. The very NRM, the principle which we carry in our constitution that once the party has taken a decision, you must support the party position because the majority have decided. And now, the very principle that was used to support them and they, and they won elections and came to parliament on the NRM ticket. So I told them, we will not invite them. But remember, I'm the custodian of the NRM constitution, the chief custodian. So I was uh, advised by the legal team that chief custodian, even if somebody is to be dismissed, must go through a process. And you have never subjected them to that process. And which is true. Which is true. So, legally, they are members of NRM. They still carry the, the, the party cards. They are on the NRM ticket in the parliament. And we've invited them for the national conference as members of NRM. So now they are coming? On the advice of your... The accreditation has gone on this evening by the government chief whip and they have not yet received the, a detailed <laughs> report of who has been accredited and who has not yet been accredited. But constitutionally, we, we expect them to come. So if members of parliament who have the mandate of the people have voted them, if, and that's the reason why you had some consultations as far as this amendment was concerned, and, and they have gone, for example, I'll, choose the, I'll take the example of Fort Porto Municipality or Kaburi District, and the people there say, you know what, we don't want this amendment, and then they represent their people, and their people are actually their bosses have sent them to parliament. Why should you reprimand them for that? One, I want you to remember that we had this a meeting as Central Executive Committee about the issues to do with the Constitution amendments and a decision was taken that let amendments be supported. And then we will also have NEC, we also had the NEC, National Executive Council. We also had district conferences in all of the districts in this country. And we also had consultations also in all constituencies in this country. And then a decision was taken. Let constitutional amendments be supported. So when you say that they went to, to the people, the people who were in sake are people. The people who were in NAC are people. The people who took a decision in district conferences so are people. Are, are you getting, so those are, are you people. getting, are you getting you know, you know, reports from the constituencies that they were, the people were misrepresented? Even in, even in their constituencies, the reports were filed. Even by even some of them themselves filed the reports. And that's why you see, even after t doing whatever they did, some are saying, look here, this and this happened. Can we have this discussion? But all of that, as per the constitution of NRM, is supposed to be discussed by, between those people and the disciplinary committee. Mm -hmm. So as we talk now, the, the government chief whip has petitioned the secretary general about the 30 members who went against the caucus decision, the party decision. Because in NRM, the, 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 the responsibility of uh, legislation was delegated to the NRM caucus. So before they get to, to parliament, they must sit also 
and generate a caucus decision. But this one even had gone beyond the caucus, the different organs of the party took a decision. So really, I, I, there's, you measure democracy by the freedom you can give to the dissenting voices, not the freedom you can give to those who have already, you know, to, to those who are assimilated. You know, that's how you can tell that this institution is democratic. But you, when you are let those with dissenting voices also give them the freedom to express themselves, including those who are, you know, are party diehards. That's how we can say this, this party is vibrant. But for you, you do not want anybody they to are, have a dissenting they, voice they, they, within your party. What kind of democracy is that? They are free to have discussion. They are free to air out their views, even if they are dissenting views. But when, at the end of it all, a decision must be taken so that they move as a team, they move as, a, as, a, as a people who, who decided to move together under the constitution of NRM. Because for people to live together, there must be some rules. Without rules, then it ceases, they, they cease to be an organized group. Now, I want you to know that this constitution of NRM is subordinate to the national constitution. So, when the national constitution, the winner takes it all. So, so even in the, in the NRM constitution, when there is a debate, and a decision is to be taken, the, the majority take the day. So what you are talking about is actually interest in the constitution of Uganda. The winner takes it but all. But do you know, so are, are you aware it, uh, that there is no history, room, there is no room, there is no room, there is no room that you have ever found, there is no room that you have ever seen that they say, since there the, 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 the are these dissenting voices, the, these, these few who didn't vote, let them be the ones to take leadership. It is only NRM government that brings those dissenting views and, this, and, the, and gives them space and say, let's work together. That's why you see some members of the so opposition are working with them. So you, with you're, actually, you're, actually, you're actually punishing them for refusing to vote for an amendment of the Constitution. It's not punishing. But you know, when you go for a disciplinary measure, you can the, even and it, so their it biggest is not, their biggest crime it is, is for having you can not be voted cautioned, for the amendment. You can be cautioned, you can be advised, you can be pardoned, you can be you can be suspended, you can be dismissed. So why do you give the, the last one of dismissal? In your own view, why do you give the last one? There are many options. The, let's not preempt what the disciplinary committee would do. But your, your biggest uh, bone of contention is because they did not vote for the amendment. And yet, you, are the you aware that, that history, history is likely to judge these people better, and, and with all respect, it could judge you harshly for the, what you did? I, 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 I can't really comment on that because I don't know what history will bring. I don't know what history will bring. Because even in our faith, I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic. There are those who, 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 who say Jesus Christ did this good, this did this good, this did better. But had he, if, if Jesus is to come back, if he was uh, treated the way he was treated in that era of technology, if he comes now in this era of technology, what will happen? So it depends on the individual, but also at the same time, I don't know what history will bring. But most importantly, there must be rules to guide people if they are to move together. Wouldn't it make you, is, doesn't it even make you better that among your group, you have those who maybe the majority have decided to take a, a direction that you, have, you want them to take, and there are a few with different voices, and, and that is healthy, and that is called democracy. Isn't that a better, that, that, well, a better argument has won the day, that's okay, but there are those who think, a minority who think otherwise, and you let them, and they are all members of NRM. That, I suppose, would have made you look much better so than... Let me ask, which direction then will the party take? If each of the members of the party took a different direction, would we still have members? You wake up in the morning, and we are discussing, say, water in this glass. Those seated there, that one seated there, talks going the other side, this one, this side, this one, this side, the other and the other side, the other and the other side. What are you left with? Are you offering leadership? You let those with a better argument win? 
but you do so not have in punish. this case you don't who, have who, punish. in this case who had the better argument we, you had well in your party uh, who had the better argument was by in your own judgment who had it was the best argument was by coercion argument? or persuasion or or any anyway no in your it, view don't talk for any but in your own view who had the best argument look i am you, look, you. i am shedding I'm, I'm shining a light into your party and i'm seeing i'm, I'm looking at you you know, trying to disband members of your party because they have a different argument is not right. It's not Members democratic. of the party must move in one direction. You can discuss and disagree, but the moment you decide that let's take this direction, you all must move to that direction. Because if you move to different di 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 directions, then you will not have a party. It will be something different. All right. I think we will have to move on. All the party organs, apart from the National Delegates Conference, have endorsed President Museveni as the sole candidate for 2021. Um, with 34 years in power, you still look at him as the one and only who can be your party chairman and, and again the presidential candidate? First of all, elections within the party are organized by the secretariat. So that means I'm part of the team that organizes the primaries or elections of the party structures. But politicians are free to make their political statements, provided they hurt nobody. Politicians are free to, to, to air out their views, provided they do it at the right time or even the right forum. They, they are free. So, when somebody wakes up and says, I support Sand So, I support Sand So, it is his right. And given by the Constitution, national Constitution. So, when one wakes up and says, I support Sand So, is the Sand So I want, it is his right. And if that is what would give that person sleep, why do you deny that so, person sleep? So, when President Museveni came to power in 1986, Yes, I was in primary seven. Yes, in primary seven. Yes. And uh, when 35 years, late, 35 years later, he's still in power and is mm. looking to extend that to 40 years. Mm. Did you, or maybe I could even say your parents, envisage that 40 years later, the same person will still be at the presidents of Uganda? Was that the design? Was that the plan? It's Ugandans to decide. So if Ugandans have decided for this long up to today, the majority take the day. But if Ugandans are not approached by other people whom you compete against, for example, the FDC and other people, they cannot even go and meet their, their, their party members. They cannot even assemble anywhere. You know, the party in power has unleashed the military and the police on them. In fact, as if the military and the police has declared war on them. How can they able to persuade Ugandans to, un to, to get their viewpoint when you cannot let them see the people? How can you say that when an NRM candidate for presidential has never gone through an oppose? They are always uh, competitors. They are always opponents in the, in the, in the political arena. Do you How do they manage do to get do those votes that they get? Do you really appreciate the difficulties your colleagues on the other side of the aisle, they go through in trying to reach the people because you cannot make it even easier for them to reach the people and talk to them. Police has unleashed all, all instruments of coercion from tear gas to rubber bullets to, to, to water cannon and everything, not to meet, really. And, and for them, I think it could even be right to say they are not competing against the NRM. They feel they are competing against the state with its S organs. Sometimes I see the challenge and I also appreciate but also have to look on the side of the, the people who are acting on behalf of the state, the police. And then we come up to say, can we offer solutions? Let me give you an example. Under iPod, when all this was happening, we said there is the Public Order Management Act, which, was, which is in place. But it talks of, you file a notice with the police. And some people were reading it like, you seek permission. And we said, how do we then cure this? Let's put our proposals for the regulations to implement this Public Order Management Act. 
and we put up regulations. Because if you file a notice, there should be a register that, you, that shows that you have filed a, a notice and you have, you have registered your notice with the police. So, how there should be proper interpretation of the word notice, filing notice, and all of that was done. Why did we that do that as iPod? Is to make sure we simplify. We simplify so that we have space as political parties. We have space, not only as political parties, but also for pub because public order management act is for public meetings, not only for political parties, for not only for politics, but also public meetings. Yes, but also one thing I also want to I want you to know. Sometimes, some of us don't actually follow the law and decide not to, to we want to use that to play victim to, to, to solicit sympathy but from there, the viewers. There are many instances when everything has been followed. I said there sometimes. Are, there are many instances, yes, when everything has been followed and the police still deny them the ability to be able to meet their people when everything has been followed to the letter. You know, when, when, when the Honorable Robert Chagulani you know, wrote to the Electoral Commission that he wanted to go and consult, you know, as and an he was granted. He was granted. On the first granted, day, yes. he could not even move. On the first day. He was granted. And when he was faced with the challenges, he went and had discussions with the, the Electoral Commission. He has never told us what transpired in that meeting, and the Electoral Commission and has one of kept you has quiet. Said that and burning, why have they, they even kept quiet? They are even burning meetings in and homes. Why, in homes. And why have they kept quiet? He has kept quiet. The Electoral Commission has kept quiet. We are waiting to hear what happened in that meeting. What was the way forward? What was the resolution in that meeting? I would be happy but, if but I if benefited from you. But if he stopped in Chadondo, in his own constituency, he stopped in Gulu and, and Lira and other places, uh, how does he even get the, the energy to keep moving? Because he's being stopped by the state, not even the, the NRM party. Because the NRM party is so fused with the state and... Uh, you have unleashed all the, the instruments you, of coercion. Have, have you ever yes. seen him stopping somebody? When people are in the in the police uniform, when people are in the uniform of UPDF, those are sons and daughters of Ugandans, ah. and who are paid by taxpayers' I have, money. I've just been you have not seen I've them in this in I've this just, logo. I've just have been you seen them with this logo? I've just been listening to different military officers making statements that are, are, are going round including one, one, one general that, that we have a lot of respect for, who is taking a partisan kind of angle. Who is that? You've listened. General Katumba Wamala has come out to say nobody should do ABCD, making statements that are really political as a, a serving military officer that are partisan. But do you know he's holding a political office? He's a minister of works, transport. He's yeah. a minister. The question should be, how do we separate him, the soldier, and him, who is a, in politics, in the political you arena, in you parliament, don't because by the and design, him as a by minister. The design, by the design of your party, you are fused in state and the party. So, you, the journalist, should be helping us. How do we separate the two or the three in one person? No, you just, you just don't contaminate the, the soldiers and to bring them into politics. You mean politics is contaminated? Yes, the, you, in this case it is. So you are, uh, you are, you are relating with me in a, in a, at your own risk? This is the moment because when I'm you're a not. politician. This is the moment when you're not. I'm a politician. No, I'm a politician and uh, at, at, a, at a bigger level, at a higher level. But we have seen So the Uganda. issue is, don't talk of politics being, a cont you've used the word contaminated. Contaminated. I think talk of convincing. But contaminated, no. I think we have clean politics as Uganda compared to our neighbors. There are certain things we should appreciate. Well, in the Bugiri, uh, during the campaign, somebody was shot dead, and that's your own district. But do you know that they were going to kill the, the, the Bukoli what, Central what MP? What you call that? Do you if know they were going to kill? By the way, do you know what happened in the Bugiri? In Arua, somebody people was shot dead. People came with even in sticks Bobby, with, Bobby, the, with the nails and were hitting people that's with the, the nails. That's the contamination I'm talking about. Because we kept quiet, you think? Yeah, uh, there is the a proverb in yes. Soga that There's even if somebody keeps quiet, he will also be mourning his mother. Yes, I didn't please. expect that is to, from you. And I've told it to you. Because exposing all of that went on, 
would actually would have shown that there was a weakness, a lapse on the side of security. You know, I'm trying in to show of, you of, that in the, the Ugandan politics can be toxic by giving you examples. And one of them was... Do you know how many people were beaten in Arua? I was in Arua. Somebody died in People in hit Honorable Tiperu's office. Where was that office hit by the NRM people? So is it Women toxic? were beaten. So is it, were they beaten so by NRM that is people? The, that is the toxicity Please. I'm telling, telling about. That's the contamination But I'm what about. is the source? It's from which side? Why do you put the blame on one side? Why don't you put the blame on both sides? And everybody is held responsible and we clean up. Guns were put in the room Because we of keep quiet, guns, you think? Guns were put on honorable, in the room Let of honorable Robert you, Chagulani. You hear, even that, somebody who doesn't flat. shout more. Who also mourn a mother. You know Uganda is listening to you. Yes. And I'm one woman. Very careful with my words. The what I've told you today, I will tell it to you tomorrow. All right. If and I that's you, why I, d I always, tr I think it's most always times, talk less. It's always advisable. So when you hear NRM people quiet, who the major now people in NRM have termed silent majority, doesn't mean that NRM is not hurt by the actions of some of the sisters, the, the, the political opponents or sister parties. It happens. Let me tell you. People, but remember, at the end of the Kasumi day, Mumba, it people, is NRM party in, in power and which has the responsibility yes, you're, to you're make sure but we bring sanity Honorable for all, to all of Kasumi, such things. People in Uganda are hurting. Poverty has hit them so hard. In fact, there is even some kind of uh, something that is training. Probably you have seen it. Omoava Fude, Omoava has committed suicide. It could look like a joke, but people are telling you. If you've seen that thing, I've seen it. But let me around. ask. People, you mean uh, the word suicide, you're only hearing it now? Were people not committing suicide before? Let's analyze why were people committing suicide then? Are they the same I, reason I that am, people I'm are committing to tell suicide you that now? Uganda's so that are we address you something. It. We have in even, some of these engagements you know, in this country, we have media. even, we have even, especially me and you have gone to school, leave our children to the TVs, and they grow with very poor parenting. And when they grow, they cannot hold themselves, especially the millennials. And then you find all sorts of things cutting themselves to see blood. What is that? Those are signs of poor parenting. Then when you see that, you find them committing suicide. Go behind and find the exact reason. We have not paid enough attention to our children. We who have gone to school, our parents who had little education, had time for the children. Are we doing the same? Why is this happening? Why the word millennials? Have you analyzed it at the back? But uh, the education sector has been neglected. For example, the money you're giving captation grant to primary school, only 7,000 shillings per child. If you try to calculate that, you're giving 70 shillings per child per day. Uh, really, what kind of you know, help are you, are you giving the education sector? No wonder. The children of the NRM elite will always have to, to, to excel because they are not going into these kind of schools. When the NRM took power, remember how much money they were collecting? And look at how much money the NRM government is collecting in terms of taxes now. But the issue is what, is, what are the priorities? Government had put a lot of money since 2000 and, the, and, the, and I think since 2005 into the infrastructure. Because remember, the, the, the development, our, our partners in development, would prefer most times to put more money in the software, not the hardware. So a decision was taken that let's put more money in the infrastructure. And that's why more money was put in the roads, more money was put in energy. And there is now something to show. Now government has removed the money from, uh, has reduced on the amounts of money in the roads and, what in the, and the energy so that we have money even in water. Because we must have clean water for, for home consumption, of course, that the, the advantages, you know, but also to have water, to have irrigation okay. because of climate changes. So those decisions are taken. So in education, yes, the money is little, but government, if you observe, the numbers have been growing. It started with a, with a few, but the numbers have kept growing. So the budget keeps growing, 
but the money that goes to the individual doesn't grow. But if you are to look at it in terms of the overall amount of money, the money has kept growing. In terms of, and we are now looking at how much goes so to the kid in terms of UPE. You expect, but you also look at you money expect, for construction in expect, the same sector. How do you expect children of the poor who are getting 70 shillings per day as their capitation grant compete with the children of the NRM elite? who are going in the, in the first world schools. That is when government brings programs of Operation Wealth Creation so that this person is able to produce, to improve on his or her income in the home and be able to take care of the child in addition to what is coming from government. All right, Honorable Justin Kasula Lumumba, we are going to take a break. And when we come back, I'll open the lines. You'll see the numbers on your screen. Please uh, call us and uh, talk to the Secretary General Maybe you have a question or you have something you want to inform us or something that you have picked it in the conversation. This is your moment. You have to be very precise and concise. And should you disagree with the Honorable Justin Kasul Lumumba, I implore you to disagree with respect. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guest tonight is the Secretary General of the NRM Party, the Honorable Justin Kasule Lumumba. Uh, the Honorable Mbabazi is now very close uh, to President Museveni and he has been invited as a special, special guest. Where does Mbabazi's return put those that humiliated him five years ago, almost? Was he humiliated? Yes, he was. I don't recall so. I don't recall because if it was if there was anybody to humiliate him, I think it would have been me or Dr. Ruhakana Rugunda because Dr. Ruhakana Rugunda became the Prime Minister and Honorable Mama Mbabazo was the Prime Minister. In the rough and tumble of a presidential campaign, a lot was said. No, I don't remember any of the two, whether me or Dr. Ruhakana Rugunda, make, making any derogatory statement about Honorable Mama Mbabaz. But anyway, Honorable Mama Mbabaz and uh, His Excellency Yori Kagutam Seven, these are people who had been friends for long. Yes. And by the way, that age, it's also not easy to make friends. At that age, it's not easy to make friends. So if you can reconcile with an old friend, somebody you know very well, somebody who knows you, the better. But also let it be a lesson to us that you can compete and you don't become enemies. And you can disagree in life and you don't become enemies. It, it, it is human. I see no problem with it. It is human. And so he has invited him, first of all as somebody who he worked with, as somebody who was a secretary general of NRM, as somebody who was a prime minister, as somebody who was uh, his friend, which is okay. And uh, if you observe, the five observers he has invited for NEC is uh, Her Excellency Dr. Speciosa Wandira Kaziwe, His Excellency Dr. Gilbert Bukenya Balibaseka, Right Honorable Chintu Musoke, Right Honorable Amama Mbabazi, but also Honorable Francis Babu. These are senior leaders in this country. These are people who have served and continue serving this country in different capacities. And uh, these are people who are highly educated. So they offered, also as professionals, they offered service to this country other than being politicians. So actually, uh, for me, I think we've been limited the five to neck is small, but he still has the ten to be, to invite to so we, what, to the national so we, conference, like and he has already invited. Carrying a bigger role in the, in the party. I can't. I, I can't say yes or no. It is that that should be put to him because it is him to choose. It is him to choose. He never brought back his card, back to the party. He 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 has told you. He is very ready to meet the president as long as there is a need to meet him. They were together, you saw, outside this country. So 
I see, I, I, I actually see no challenge and I mean no problem. And I don't know why Ugandans really should do. We should instead clap and applaud them and say, thank you for being good leaders. You can compete, but remain friends. You have also invited other members of the political parties, the, the opposition. Um, and yet, whenever they want to move on and do their political campaign, you are denying them oxygen almost to do what they want to do, and you want them to come to your, to your, to your party. Maybe. As, uh, as uh, political parties under the iPod platform, we call each other sister parties. What's wrong with inviting a sister when you have a function at home? What's wrong with inviting a brother I, I see that when you have you, a function? I, I see that you're being very That is a sign I see that... that uh, I see that you've been becoming very pretentious, that you cannot allow them, using the police and the army, to assemble and meet their, their members, but you are inviting them to come to your party. But why do you demean police and the army? It's like they because don't decide on their own. It is Lumumba to dictate to them what they should do. No, please. That's a state. Lumumba can come and go, but that's, the state remains. NRM can come and go, but the state remains. And the state has been there. So these are professionals. I'm not a professional in security. I'm not. So, when they are doing their work, I think what we should do is like to have a lens. Did they do their work well? Did they follow the law? Those, those are the things we should. But also look at the, the other side of the, of, the, of the coin. How did this Sandy so behave when it comes to this? How, how did this, how, what happened to Sandy so? Because... You, you seem to be so biased that you blame only the police, the state, the state, the state. When do you ever blame the other side? Is it perfect? And what suggestions are you bringing to improve the situation as a way forward? That you should do. I wish you could enforce the law like it is, and not to enforce it in a selective manner. But let me open the lines so that we get to know what Uganda is saying tonight. The numbers are on your screen. Please uh, call us, and if you want to speak the Secretary General, she's here, and um, we could be a delegate who is coming to Kampala uh, in the next one day or two. Uh, tell us what you think about the, the way forward for the NRM party and how the, the CG has worked. I have a call online. Hello. Ah, we seem, we seem to have, uh, have had a problem with that. Uh, let me pick another call online, and please, you can just tell us your name and where you're from and make it very brief so that we get many views. I have a call online. Hello. Mr. Kamala. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Michael. I'm calling from Uganda. From Uganda. Yeah, I want to um, request Madam Kassile Rumumba yes. to clarify regarding the uh, label MPs. Okay. They say that they, they, they decide the party decision. Now, what was the importance of consulting? Yet, the government, the parliament even use the billions of man that could put medicine in the hospital. If like that, the, the party had the decision, then they could have not wasted such resources. Thank Second, you. Mm -hmm. I would like to challenge Madam Kassile Rumumba, talked about uh, Uganda is making a choice and uh, of life, uh, like the seven continuing to rule, and they also talked about what is the creation. Madam Kassile Rumumba, you come from the sub region. Hope you are aware that it is the third poorest sub region in the country. What has been the impact of the wealth creation and the NLM government onto the people of Usoga? Thank you That's very much. Our caller there from Uganda. Um, let me try to pick some, maybe two or three, and then the Honorable Kasol Mumba will respond at once. I have a call online. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? I'm called Justine, and I'm calling from Chotera. Justine in Chotera, you're on air. Pardon? You are on air, Justine. Tell us what you have to say. Oh, it's a pity. We, we have lost the line to Chotera, where Justine was. We have, let me pick another caller. Hello? Hello? Okay. Um, I'm going to try to pick one more, and then... Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? 
I'm calling from Hoima. Go right ahead, sir. Go right ahead. Hello. Hello. You are on air, sir. What's your name? Go right ahead. This is Tumisima Ivan from Parisa. Parisa, you're on air. Go right ahead, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamara. You're welcome. I want to thank our, our hero. Okay. Because the, in Uganda, we no longer have opposition. This opposition is all about segregation and destruction. Okay. So I want to appreciate what NIM has done in Uganda. And I want to thank our president in the U.S. Kaguta Museven. Okay. Please, our lady, we, we are wishing you very well for our function. All right. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you in Palisa. All right, uh, maybe my producer is telling me just quite a number, but let me just try to take one more if the line is clear. I have a call online. Hello. Hello, very good evening. Good evening, Tomorrow. sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Mojum calling from Natet. Mojum Natet, are you on air? Yeah, no. Uh, I want to approach MTV for really bringing this program tonight. Mm. But now, what I think is, um, Madam, Madam Secretary for the NRM, I uh, discuss mm. There is something you are forgetting. Uh, when you talk on air, there are people who are not partisan to any party, who are not uh, related to any party. You don't talk. You don't talk. You only talk for NRM. You think NRM is doing good. It's doing, you only applaud NRM. What does the government done to improve life? of these other people who are poor, okay? There is something that Kamara brought up of Omar. It's trending and people are ignoring it. But it is what is hurting people. People are broke. They don't have what to eat. And you're organizing uh, your direct conference, you're budgeting it with millions of money that you can and don't know where you're getting them. Please, at these issues, that are meant for Ugandans, not only for the party. Consider those people who don't have any party, who are independent, who only want to improve their lives. All right. Thank you very much. I, I thank you very much because you have spoken with a lot of clarity. And all of you who have called, and I'm sorry I'm not picking any more calls. It's a question of time. Uh, there's actually like one or two questions to the Honorable Justin Kasule Lumumba. But please, if you could respond to them and then your concluding remark. I want to thank those who called in. It's a sign that we are not only talking to each other here. There are people who are listening and following, and they've had to forego their sleep, even those who are outside this country and uh, have paid attention to what we are saying. So I want to thank them. I don't take them for granted. I thank them. The, the, the decision of the party, and then if it we had it, why did they then go to consult? I've said consultations took place in SEC, mm -hmm. in INEC, in the districts, but also in the constituencies. So the, the consultations went on because the party was generating a decision mm -hmm. or about it. So it is not that the party had made a decision before. That's not so. Then the issue of, uh, yes, we still have poverty in Usoga. Like, we also have poverty even in other parts of the country. But that doesn't mean that we who come from areas which are, who, who, which are still faced with poverty to that magnitude won't be part of the leadership of this country. We have to. And when we are here as leaders, what, do we, what, what, what are we offering? Let me give an example. If sugar in Ibusoga has no market, but somebody in Imbarara, is, people in Ankole are producing milk, when they produce this milk and it's processed, then it is the responsibility of us in Ibusoga to market this sugar to the people who are processing the milk so that the, 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 there is a market for the sugar. It is the responsibility of 
the, we in leadership to see that the sugar which is produced in Ibsoga, which has no market, and, and um, we talk to the neighbors like President Museven has done and has talked to the neighbors in Kenya to requesting them to stop importing sugar from Brazil but instead import sugar from Uganda under the East African community. So the issue of uh, Justin from uh, Chotera who has uh, called, yes I know Justin, she's called Justin Nachimba, we were together at university same class, we did same course and we, same, we were in the same class. Sorry that Except we lost. Peter, she did not say that. Maybe she was going now to. No, but also hearing her she, voice. She looks like she has taken a different direction from yours, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You, you I think when you heard the name, the, the name Justin, you must, uh, you, your technician must have decided to cut and thought maybe it's my twin sister. But it's okay. Then uh, we have uh, Tumusime from uh, Palisa. Then uh, who, who said in Uganda we no longer have opposition? I, I, I don't want to carry that because the, the Ugandans have the, 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 the freedom to choose which political organization to belong to or which party to, to register provided they meet the requirements of that particular party or the requirements to register a party. So I don't want to say we don't have opposition when we have about 38 ca uh, political parties registered with the electoral commission or under the electoral commission. So, the issue of opposition, I think I leave that to the Ugandans. All right. Not to me, who is a player, to be the one to, to carry that and also carry it on my lips. That will not be responsible you're, of me at my level. Then the some people, the, the people, the issue of the, 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 the poverty, or the advert going on around, but we also want, we should also know that we as Ugandans, when there is peace in the country like it is, the little money you get, you always think of investing because you are sure of tomorrow. And whenever you invest, you don't have money in your hands. You right. will not have money in your hands. But also what we should know is that some of our activities as Ugandans have tampered with the environment. Madam and General, sometimes we Madam get General, harsh. General, time, time is not on our side. Your concluding remark. I want to thank all of those who have listened to us. <coughs> but what I want to say, members of NRM, those coming for the national conference, please, for the municipality, we, are only, we have only invited <coughs> the, the mayor of the municipality, municipal mayor, municipal councillors, and the, the executive of the five, the mainstream, and the chairpersons of the leagues. So the different members of the executives of the leagues, other than the chairperson, you are not invited. We shall invite you next time. This is one to deal with the constitutional amendment. And today, SEC took a decision. One constitutional amendment to be dealt with, the mode of voting. Okay. Thank you. So you're expecting about 15,000 members? Yes. 15,000 delegates? Yes. All right. Madam Secretary General, Justin Kasule Lumumba, we thank you very much for your time. We appreciate your insights on the matter. And we know you're working hard for your party, which is the job for which you, you're supposed to be doing. And uh, we thank you. Sometimes Ugandans, we have different views, but that does not mean that we hate each other or anything else. We just love our country more. And that's why we want to make Uganda in, be in a better place. Uh, thank you for those who have sent in your, your comments through the telephone and, and, uh, and uh, those who have sent in their messages. I know, I don't know what you're going to be saying now about the Omuavu uh, ish campaign. Maybe Omuavu is not going to die. Good night and God bless Uganda.